Howdy and welcome to the Cape. It's great to have you back. I'm Mark and you're watching Blue Street Customs. Hey guys, this is what I'm doing. I mixed up some plaster. I just made it to the thickness that I want. Something that won't run too far, but will stay where I put it. And all I'm doing is filling in these gaps. Now you can use a stick, you can use your finger, anything you want. I'll probably end up using both. Why not? It's fun. Now, just before it's fully dried solid, I'm going to come in here and kind of recut in some of these grooves that I'm filling in. Now, I've never used this stuff before, so this is the first time trying it out. I got this stuff from Amazon. It's cheaper than Plaster of Paris. It's cheaper than that Woodland Scenic stuff. But to me, casting plaster or, well, basically ca casting plaster. Um, casting plaster is casting plaster to me. You know, some might dissolve better than others, you know. But for the stuff that I or possibly even you will ever use it for, you know, we're not trying to be, you know, world's greatest scenics. You know, in time, you know, once you get better with it or your skills get better, <clears throat> if you want to upgrade to, you know, a more high quality product, by all means, go for it. But for me, I always work with what I've got. And guess what? This is what I've got. Now you can use a like a wet cloth or something to get rid of a bunch of this, make it a little cleaner. And like I said this is the first time using this product, so I have no clue how long this is going to take to dry. It shouldn't take that long. I believe the ad said quick dry. I just took my paper towel here, dip a little, dipped it in water a little bit, just so I can clean it off a little bit. Just to help smooth it out a little bit. Now just from mixing it in the bowl here, I have noticed that it is drying pretty quick. Right down in here. It seems to be starting to get chalky. So as I use this product, you will see it's starting to stiffen up even more. And it's only been mixed five minutes, give or take. Five, maybe ten minutes. So, depending on how thick you make it, how dry or wet, it will probably depend on how quick it dries. And again, right now in here, in this, uh, my cave, it's actually uh, quite dry and, uh, and quite warm. So, that's probably also a contributing factor to how fast this stuff's going to actually dry. So I'm going to be right back. Okay, right, guys, it's been about 10 15 minutes. And as you can see, this stuff is rock hard. Still a little damp just on the inside, but like it's rock hard. So, assuming that something that thick is dry in about 15 minutes, this stuff here is also dry. This stuff here is also dry. Now you could go along if you want. Small piece of sandpaper. Give it a light sanding just to kind of re-smooth out your rocks. Now I've also gone along and dug out my mortar joints. And there we go. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is I've got Mod Podge mixed with some black paint and I'm going to use this 
to paint the foundation to seal it. The black will also get down deep in the cracks so that when you start doing your dry brushing technique or um, your leopard technique, whichever way you're going to do it, um, the black will pronounce through the stone cracks and help highlight and shadow all the detail. Okay guys, so I've got here Mod Podge mixed with black paint. Mod Podge, matte. You can pick this up at a lot of different places. Uh, you can probably find it at a bunch of do different dollar stores. Michaels, hobby stores, craft stores. You can even find it online. So this stuff is everywhere. <clears throat> but I use the Mod Podge matte for doing this type of stuff. You can also use Mod Podge gloss um, to do things like ripple effects and stuff like that in, uh, on water or to make rocks shiny, any, anything like that. But anyways, I use this to seal the foam. So, that's what we're going to do. Now, like I said, the reason I use, I mix black with it is because when you start doing your um, painting, dry brushing or whatever technique you, uh, you use, this helps give shadows and define the cracks. Works really great for things like mountains and, you know, pretty much anything. You know, if you build a medieval building and uh, you can put it, be cover the whole building with this stuff, it'll seal it. Make it all one uniform color and uh, gives you the added benefit of having uh, all your shadows and cracks and crevices all ready dark so you don't have to go in and do it later. Things like this plaster that we put on that uh, for filling the joints and the cracks and anything like that. If you don't seal it and you go to paint it um, because it's such a porous material it will most definitely soak up a lot of paint. So you're going to end up using more paint in the long run to try and cover it because it's not sealed. This here will, son of a hobo, uh, this here will seal it so that it won't use up as much paint. You do have a bit of working time with it, so when you uh, make little mistakes like this, you've got time to go back and try to clean it up a little bit. And because it is pretty much a uh, type of PVA glue, it uh, wipes up with just water. Cleans up decent, just like so. Looks good, and it doesn't take overly long to dry. Now you can also use this stuff and water it down for doing your uh, scenic, you know, putting down um, flocking and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> you can put it in little tiny spray bottles. And if you have big areas, you put your flocking down and seal it. You'll see me do that later on when I start building the land for this. I've seen uh, a lot of the guys on YouTube, they uh, build minis and stuff like that. And they'll do the exact same thing. They'll use little um, eyedroppers or something like that. Because uh, they'll make their bases for their minis. And they'll want to put like rocks down or anything like that. To, you can use the Mod Podge or they'll water down just regular PVA glue. Now you can make a bunch of this stuff up and uh, put it in a container like I've got it. And uh, as long as the air doesn't get to it, it uh, pretty much stays the way you make it. Now if too much air gets to it, you know, then it's obviously going to dry out. So now I've seen some some people even in that big bottle Mod Podge, you know, uh, they'll put paint right into that container. Now 
Now, if you're wondering what these holes are, right here, if you watch one of the other videos, I was going to uh, <coughs> start the deck and decided not to because I wanted to paint first. Otherwise, it was going to get really hard to paint in between the uh, joisting and underneath it and all this stuff. So, decided to uh, paint here first before I did that. So anytime you do stuff like this, it's probably a good thing to uh, try to plan out a little bit first. Otherwise you could get stuck because of not thinking ahead. Now Mod Podge, um, from what I find, doesn't uh, shrink um, nearly anywhere near as much as say something like Elmer's glue or any type of PVA glue. So in my opinion, this stuff is <coughs> better for doing stuff like this. Now you can do the same thing with just PVA glue. But PVA glue dries shiny. That's why I use this. Unless you want it to dry shiny, of course. And again, in my opinion, I find that this stuff, the Mod Podge, seems to stay a little more flexible. So if it does bend a little bit, um, it won't crack like PVA glue would, which I've had happen. And there you have it. First layer is down. Open up my, uh, my dirty moonshine here. Get a little water. And this stuff is uh, this stuff is water soluble, so very easy cleanup. And I just used acrylic paint in there, so again, water soluble. Now I try to keep one brush dedicated just to this stuff here, because if you don't clean it out perfectly, which we're human, it happens, it will pretty much glue itself rock hard. And of course these brushes are just cheap brushes from the dollar store, so if it gets wrecked, well, let's go back to the dollar store and get some more. Gotta love the dollar store. For stuff like this, cheap paint brushes, you wreck them, big deal. There we go. Now we'll let this stuff dry, and uh, once it's dry, we can start doing the, uh, the paint on it. Now, one thing I was thinking about, I want you guys to let me know, is being that the roof is like this, you know, and I'm going to age the, uh, the tin roof, so the tin roof will end up like that, kind of dull, worn out. I was thinking that... <clears throat> I'm going to use, I was thinking of using a gray uh, deck stain wash to do all the wood to make it look like it's been outside for a long time, uh, the building's been sitting around, so it's all weathered and things like that. Uh, to me, this wood, the way it is, looks good, but with this roof, it looks like the building is too new and they use garbage to do the roof. And I don't want that. I want the whole building to look like it's all been built roughly around the same time. Uh, a few patches here and there. Maybe a new metal roof. Or slightly newer because it's not cedar shakes. So let me know what you guys think. Should I do the gray stain wash to make it look a lot better? Uh, the deck would be done the same thing. And also the lean-to where the sawmill is will be done the same way. So, we'll let this sit for a little bit. When it's dry, I'll be back. Oh, okay, you guys, so what we're going to do, so I got a little bit of gray here. So we're going to start off with gray first. We're going to do some dry brushing. The way to do that, take a paper towel, blow some paint in your brush, take most of it off. Now, as you can see, all I'm doing is picking up the top upper edges. So I've got a couple other colors here. This here is tan, 
and I've got uh, some Arctic White. Now I'm not even going to clean my brush. I'm just going to go right into the next color, wipe some of that off. Now I'm not going to cover as much as I did with the gray. I'm just looking for color differences. Now I'm going to put on some of this Arctic White. Slight touch of black to some of this, just to darken a couple spots up. Then I'll probably take some white and just hit the very tops of the bricks, just to and mix a little bit of black here, some gray, maybe a little bit of Arctic White, just to be able to give myself a little bit of shadowing here under the now I'm just gonna go <clears throat> a little bit of pure white just for some uh, very highlights and there we go now I'm gonna do the rest of this so when I come back I'll have the rest of it done <laughs> 